So hijack on input. So yeah, you guys can hear me now. So welcome to the Podcasters Lounge. Uh, we're going to cover all kinds of stuff. We, we're live every Wednesday evening in the U.S. Um, and you could see us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and all that stuff. You're probably watching us now. So what I'm going to do is go through what we're going to talk about. Well, I got a funny thing to, to, to go over about how to uh, how podcast guests answer questions. I'm going to talk about that. And hey, Heather. Hey, Ed Sullivan. And uh, the potties, this was a little skit that Saturday Night Live did about the pod, uh, uh, podcasting awards. Then Clean Feed is now, uh, can, can record in multi-track. Mm -hmm, we'll talk about that. Uh, Bandrew Scott from Podcastage just did a really cool video on the M-Track 2x2 interface. Uh, Pandora, this is the big news of the week. This is like, you know... A podcaster coming to Pandora, everyone's all excited about it, which it's it really is good news. The World Chess Championship match. Yes, it's going on right now. Well, not right now, but yeah. Uh, Infinity War, which I saw for the first time last night. Was it last night or two nights ago? Anyway, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Lost in Vegas. Another one of my favorite YouTube channels, TA with Mitch Ray, which is technical analysis on crypto and all that. And here's, by the way, this is Bitcoin for today. Um, then there's a post I put in the podcasters hangout about my show. I'll go over that. Um, yeah, something a little weird. It wasn't weird. It just kind of bothered me. Then you got Ezo board, which is like stuff you can put on the wall to, uh, absorb sound. I recently saw that. Oh yeah. See that? Look at that, that big orange thing. They're hanging above the pool. Uh, maybe th that probably absorbs sound. Anyway, uh, I might even play a chess game. I think I will. Maybe Ralph M. Rivera is going to be online. I can play Ralph. Um, my posture, I want to mention that. Podcasting deal alerts. They're, it's free. Are you signed up? Um, and, and let me uh, start my music too. Right? We'll go with 4%. Let me know if it's loud. Uh, meetup. I did a well. I did a presentation to the San Francisco Podcasters Meetup um, last night. Actually, uh, Daniel J. Lewis was kicked from Apple Podcasts. This is, I mean, his post is from the November 9th, so it's almost a week old. But um, this is really mellow music, huh? Oh, why did it do that? Oh, all right. Now here's Descript. You could see it's in the top left. Descript. This is the word processor where you can actually edit a podcast by editing the text and then it will edit the audio for you. It's interesting. Oh, thanks, Heather. The background music's at a good level. Uh, Blueberry, basically st some statistics requirements. I mean, I don't think this is anything new, but I thought it kind of interesting. I, I don't know how I saw it, but um, we can, we'll can we just touch on that quick. Um, David Hooper on Medium writes, here's the problem with podcast advertising. We'll talk about that. And here's Jason Rigdon. He talks about the eight types of podcast formats. Okay, then you got the Google of sound. Audio Burst wants to map out the internet we hear. This is kind of crazy. We'll talk about that. Then we got Conan O'Brien's podcast. We'll feature all these people. I think it's going to launch next week. And, uh, oh yeah, so Universal Audio has a new line. Well, it's kind of new. The Apollo X. They're right on the bottom, you can see. I don't want that. I'm already signed up. Yeah, the Apollo X. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Then, of course, we can play some Match the Mix, or we could play a Sound Gym game that we haven't played yet. Then, of course, you have PodFest and Podcast Movement. Okay, awesome. And uh, that's it. So, well, I, th that's just the quick list of what we're going to cover in today's stream. And, obviously, we're lounging. Are you guys lounging? What are you drinking? I'm drinking some pure leaf tea. Which um, I didn't open yet. See, I just cracked it. So Heather and Ed and everyone else. What are you guys drinking? Are you lounging? Are you, you know, some people watch the stream like if they're driving they just kind of put the stream on in the background which is cool um 
Barry, what do you think about my intro so far on on this uh, on this um, podcasters lounge? It's a mess. Yeah, you guys could hear Barry, right? So Heather's drinking water. I don't know. Oh, coffee. Coffee. Yeah, coffee's good. I'm drinking some tea. One thing I realized, my wife and I just went for a walk, and I was I was explaining it to her, but you ever start explaining something to someone and like you're explaining it with thoughts that you never had before? Like it just sort of spontaneously coming to you and you're explaining something to everyone else. Ralph M. Rivera's here! No way! Yes, he's here! No way! Yeah, I'm telling you, Barry, he's here! He's right on the screen! No way! Yes, he's here! Come on, Barry! Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I was walking down the street with my wife, and, um... So... Wait, what was I... Um, oh, see, I lost my train of thought. Ralph Rivera did it again, and Barry. No way. Yes, Barry. Do you think I'll, you think I'll recover my train of thought? A hundred and ninety percent. That's right. So, I was explaining to my wife. I remembered when I do my podcast show, you know, the podcast engineering show, which is, which is this show. Uh, you know, I'm going to show you on the screen in a second. Yes, the podcast engineering show. Um, when I do that show. I'm high energy. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going. It's high energy. And that's, it's good. It's the way I like to do things because high energy in the media is, is the best policy. You know, you just, when you, when you do it's one from media training, I learned a long, long time ago, the, the woman who was teaching us the media training said the number one rule of being, whether if you're ever a guest anywhere on TV or a podcast or radio, you got to bring the energy. That's number one. Because if you're boring and monotone and soft-spoken, it's terrible. So, I realize that on my stream, I'm also a lot of times energetic. And right now I feel energetic too. But when I watch some of these other streamers, including uh, Mitch Ray and, and some of these chess streams too, they're pretty chilled out. Like they, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're just talking like this and, you know, they might do something and... Whatever, so um, I, I think since this is only my sixth live stream, I'm still I'm still finding out my pacing and my groove and all that. But um, yeah, my wife went to the store. I wonder if my wife's watching on Facebook. My wife watched last week on Facebook, and she was the only one on Facebook. And I saw on Facebook it said one person, and the whole stream I was like, who is who? So, at least we have one person on Facebook, and. It ended up being my wife. So, here's we're gonna start with this. Are these things episodes or sessions? These are live streams. Thank God I don't have to choose between sessions and episodes. Anyway, um, okay. Hangout sessions. Thank you, Heather. All right. Now here's... Now let's pretend... This is... Uh, wait a minute. It doesn't all fit on the screen? No, 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 no. Wait, what the... Oh, my God. All right. I got to get this to fit all on the screen. Can I do it? There we go. Why did it... All right. There it is. I guess that's the best we're going to do. So, if uh if you're a guest on a podcast and you might not be able to read this, but it's okay cuz I'm going to I'm going to act it out. <laughs> I'm going to read it and act it out. So, you ever listen to a podcast? So, just a little background. I produce podcasts, so I edit a lot of podcasts and I edit a lot of interviews. And so I hear a lot of amateurs on interviews who they don't know how to answer questions. They do these all these stalling tactics. So I put out a post on Facebook, like maybe almost like a month ago, and I was like, "Hey, what are some of the stall tactics?" And the, and the like when someone's supposed to be answering a question and they're just not answering it, but they're talking, they're just not answering it, and it's like, 
as a podcast editor, you got to cut all that stuff out. So, so I made a big long list of everything that you could possibly say to stall before you actually answer a question. So, so let's pretend I'm going to try and get through this with a straight face. Cause there's some funny stuff in here. Let's pretend that I'm a guest on a show and let's say I'm on Ralph M. Rivera's show, which he hasn't done in a while. So everybody let's guilt him into, you know, revisiting his podcast. Okay. Um, let's say Ralph asked me a question like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter what question, um, <laughs> right. Let's say Ralph, Ralph asks, asks me, um, so, so when did, when did you first get into audio engineering, right? Let's pretend Ralph asked me that question. All right. And now I'm going to answer it as if I was a guest on Ralph's show. Ready? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> uh, that being said, you know, I'm not sure how I want to answer that, but I'm glad you asked that question. I really am. Sure. Well, let me just dive right in so I can get, <laughs> so I can get to the meat and potatoes of my answer sooner than later. Right? So, so there are several ways I can answer this question. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, do you allow profanity on your show? Well, well, I never curse anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, all right. So let me just adjust my mic real quick. Uh, check one, two. Hello. Check, check. Okay. So, you know, a long time ago, um, well, now I'm not sure how far back to go, you know, um, uh, maybe that's too far back. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I've thought about this for a while and, um, <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, oh wait, I for I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I always, um, I always try to give the greatest value to listeners, Ralph, and, and some podcast guests just talk in circles about nothing, but not me, okay? So I hope everyone is able to get the deeper meaning of what I'm about to say, okay? Um, wait, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is it okay? No? Okay. Okay. So, la so, la <laughs> so last time I was here, um, oh wait, have I been on your show before, Ralph? Um, Anyway, um, how many listeners does your show have? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. What time is it right now? Like right this second? Is it daylight savings? Uh, uh, never mind. Never mind. You know, you have great intuition as a host, Ralph, to bring up this question at this juncture. Okay. Now that being said, uh, I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up here. So, um, um, Anyway, I'm sorry. Can you can you please repeat the question? <laughs> um, you know, some keyboard typing, some pen clicking. Um, hello, are you there? Still there? Okay. Um, so, all right. So your question was, how did I get into audio engineering? Okay. So, um, so uh, oh hey hey Fido hey buddy how you doing? Oh, is this petting my dog there? Um, actually, <laughs> um, I <laughs> actually, I'd like to start my answer over again. Is that okay? Can I do that? Um, oh, sorry, my microphone got unplugged. I'm sorry. Oh crap! I just spilled coffee on myself. Oh, okay. Okay, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All right. You know, it's funny. Sometimes when I answer this question, I get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but today, um, you know, I don't know. And I, I, I think it's really important, uh, you know, as a podcast guest to have uh, concise language. I really do. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, I'm not going to give you my stock answer to this question either. OK. <laughs> OK. And, and can I just emphasize how much I appreciate being on your show today, Ralph? Sincerely, thank you again. And, and, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's a great question, but actually, may I ask why you brought up that question at this particular time? <laughs> um, okay. Can, can you tell me what I actually, can you tell me what I said about four minutes ago? Because it was really good. And, and I'd like to add to that. <laughs> um, all right. I really appreciate you bringing that up. So absolutely. Absolutely. So let me, let me apologize. <laughs> let me apologize to your editor in advance. Um, I just, I was eating some crackers and stuff. So anyway, I think I'm, I think I'm drifting into my memoirs. <laughs> so I'd like to apologize. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that great? Me and Brian Ensminger went back and forth on Facebook for like a while writing all these. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
Uh, that being said, uh, <laughs> Ralph went through a lot of tissue and lotion during that bit. Oh my god. Epic. Yes, I'm telling you. So anyway, um, there you go. So now if you ever want to go on a show and just... St I, I, I think I'm gonna... I would love to try this for real. Like, go on someone's show and just like... Literally do this and just <laughs> and just see how long it takes the host to be like, uh, excuse me. What what are you doing? Can you just answer the question? <laughs> right. I'm telling you this is what happens Absolutely, 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 absolutely um, <laughs> So anyway that that's that I've actually this podcast guest.com website I don't know what this is, but this was just to remind myself to to do that little bit Right? Yeah. See, if it's just your wife and you, then... Right. You, you don't have to deal with the guests who are like that. Hey, Carrie's watching on uh, Facebook. Hey, Carrie. I can't wait until Restream can put the Facebook comments where they should be. Can you guys see the... Oh, see, you're missing some of the comments here. Oh, no. Okay. So, yeah, welcome, Carrie. Glad you're here. I'll try, I'm trying to watch the Facebook comments, too. So, so some of the big news this week, sort of, was the, that Saturday Night Live did this skit on, on the podcasting uh, about podcast award ceremonies. And... I mean, this is interesting because it's it's something that definitely everyone in podcasting is going to share. And I watched it once. I watched it once. And I mean, it was okay. I got to say, I, I don't, it, to me, it wasn't that funny. Uh, some of it was okay. So There, there were like little kind of jabs in there that were kind of funny, right? But did you guys watch this? Did you guys watch this video? What was your reaction? Because I, I, I don't know. What the heck? Is that someone talking in the music? All right. So did you guys see this video? I'm going to fast forward this song. Yeah, you haven't seen it. Check it out because it's like... It's hard to explain, but it, it again, it was, I guess, kind of funny, but it, I don't know. Check it out and let me know. I mean, I could probably play it on the stream right now, but um, I don't know. Am I even allowed to do that? Oh yeah, Carrie says she thinks it was great a great critique of the ad placement. So yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, ads. Actually, there's an article by David Hooper we're gonna talk about later about ads in podcasting. And um, that's that's quite a topic because it's 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 really a conundrum. Like it it yeah, Ed Sullivan says it wasn't that funny. Yeah, it was it, like it was okay, but it just it wasn't that funny. But yeah, ads in podcasting are so difficult because you all know, you probably know that podcasting is the most authentic medium in terms of like, if the host is like BSing you, you know it because of the voice, the voice, um, the, the, the human voice is, it, it, it conveys sincerity and authenticity even more than your physical, even more than your posture and that stuff like that. So that's why in podcasting, when it's just audio only, you can hear when a host is trying to read an ad, but he really doesn't care, you know? So Ralph says he liked it. And yeah, I agree, Ralph. Saturday Night Live only satirizes things that are relevant as part of the zeitgeist. Definitely true. I mean, I, I, I'm i glad they did it. And I, I think they should. I, I love that podcasting's more in the mainstream media. Um, totally. Totally. So I just I just didn't think it was that funny. I mean, well, and I guess they kind of limited themselves to what they could do because it was based on the podcast awards. But I don't know. It was it, some of it was okay. So it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing in the world. But um, I guess it was mediocre. I guess I should say it's mediocre in my opinion. Yes, Ralph. That is. You are right, sir. So I'd like podcasting to get more into the mainstream media, but. But with the ads, like I was saying, it's a conundrum because big companies, they want to do podcasts, but then they got to make money back, you know? 
It's like you and I, or if you're an independent podcaster, you're pretty much doing a podcast to support your business or to support you or support something, right? So, you know, that's what I do with my school, right? My podcast engineering school. I do my show to support the school because people listen to my show and then some of them enroll in my school. Yes, we talked about that last week, Ralph Rivera, that social media marketing world is abandoning podcasting, which, uh, yeah, that's it's okay. I, I, uh, I didn't think that was, I mean, it, it, it's news, but it, it wasn't like shock, that shocking or anything. Um, yes, and Carrie mentions that the award actually was a, was a blue Yeti, like a golden blue Yeti, which that was kind of funny. <laughs> That, that that was like the only thing that I kind of giggled at. I'm like, oh god, it's a blue yeti. And um, anyway, in my in my meetup last night, I did a I presented to the San Francisco Podcasters Association. Oh, there's me! Look on the on they already put it up on the meetup. This was me virtually speaking to their meetup last night, and which was it was pretty cool. Um. Although the sound was weird because the, the what I was hearing from their side was the computer microphone. So the audio that I was hearing was horrendous. Uh, but of course, my audio was fine for them. But um, but anyway, um, we were talking about the Blue Yeti at the meeting. Um, <clears throat> Mac Weldon. I don't know who Mac Weldon is. So anyway, that was, it was, and, and by the way, I, I have, I, and by the way, absolutely, absolutely. I got, I got to stop saying, by the way, that that's my, one of my crutches, I guess. Um, my presentation from last night, I'm going to actually make a video, like a screen capture video on my machine, like tomorrow or the next day. And I'm going to put it up on YouTube. So just check out social media. I'll be sharing that. Um, it won't be that long, but um, what was it about? It's about... Um, the um, the four four steps four steps of of professional production, something like that. But it, it, it's good stuff, kind of like an overview. Anyway, um, so there you go. That's that. So let me put this over here and clean feed. Okay, clean feed. Have you ever guys ever used clean feed? Uh, I've used it a few times. Seems pretty cool. It's it's similar to Zencaster and uh, Ringer and Squadcast, but it does have differences. It it um, it actually one of the things about CleanFeed it it does not record each um, it does not record each participant locally on their own machine, which. To me, that's the reason I use services like that, right? So I, so when I connect with someone who's in, like Heather, who's in New Zealand, if I'm interviewing Heather, I want her microphone to be recorded on her machine locally in New Zealand. And then later on, I can get, she can upload that, or Zencaster uploads that file, and I get that file. Rather than what CleanFeed does is, Heather's voice from New Zealand has to travel through the internet all the way to Colorado Springs, where I am, and then it's recorded on my machine. So if the internet glitches, you're screwed. So that's one thing about CleanFeed that is not perfect in my in my opinion. Uh, but but I did have Mark from CleanFeed on my show, and we really talked about it. And they actually do their. Um, they, wait, wait, now Ralph is on Twitch? Ralph, are you watching on Twitch and YouTube? A plus for you. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, right? Barry, come on. Is Ralph the best? Ralph is the best. Um. So, <laughs> oh, he teleported to Twitch. Oh, I see. Now I get it. Oh, boy. So, anyway, clean feed used, clean, the way clean feed used to work is that the local host, so me, let's say me locally, I'm recorded on, let's say the left, and all the guests I have, whether it's Heather, let's say Heather and Ralph join me, well, Heather and Ralph are gonna be recorded on the right. 
they're going to be combined and recorded on the right. So it was only a stereo file and the host was on one side and all the guests were on the other side. <clears throat> so if it was a one-on-one -on -one interview, technically you'd each have separate tracks, but if it was a if it was a three or more people involved, now you're starting to put people on the same track. And so um so now Clean Feet apparently is able to record multi-track and I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if they are going to record people on their own end or if they're going to somehow bring everyone in to my browser and record everything there. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it yet. And it's in beta, so I wouldn't, you know, expect to jump on this tomorrow and have it work perfectly and all that stuff. But it's fun to try. Like a lot of this stuff, I don't have time to even try. So. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I also would like, you know, look, I'm. If, if anything works, I love it, you know. Um, the problem is the problem is all these services, they don't work all the time. And there's various reasons. And usually it's user error. And I think we talked about this before, but... Yeah, so clean feed, we could try that out. Um, so Bandrew, who's usually here... Barry, I think Barry's offended that, that, uh, that Bandrew's not here. Anyway, he'll probably show up. He's a busy man. He's, he puts out, I don't, yeah, if you guys if just go to YouTube, follow podcastage. And uh, anyway, he has a lot of subscribers. Look, 81,000. He's big time. He's the man. He's the Mac daddy. Seriously. 81K. Nothing to sneeze at. But he did, recently did a, a review slash exp, explanation video of the M-Track 2x2, which is a, it's this audio interface from M-Audio. Uh, pretty interesting and he was pretty um, he was uh, he liked it you know he liked it now it's it's only one or two inputs I think it might be one input maybe one input and then an instrument input and I think it's cheap it's like a hundred bucks but definitely go if, if you know Banjo's videos are awesome so what what uh what audio interfaces do you guys have that's what I want to know from you in the chat. By the way, thanks for hanging out in the podcasters lounge. Let it, let me know what your audio interface is and let me know what you're drinking. I bet Ralph's drinking carrot juice. That's my guess. The guess. And there we go. So what do you guys All right, Heather's got a Steinberg UR 242. Yes. And uh, Mr. Xylox, who I forgot his name again. I know, I, I know, we did this before, <laughs> but I forgot your name. But it's okay. But one XLR and and one quarter inch. Um, yeah, UMCHD four four hundred four HD. I don't know that one. What is a UMC UMC HD? Anthony, yes. See, I'll remember Anthony. Probably about another two or three streams. No problem. Anthony, I'll remember that. Ralph's drinking Simpson and Vale tea. Yeah, totally, Anthony. Too many HDs in the name. Like, I think we should all add HD to our name. Chris HD. That should be my name. Ralph HD. Ralph uses a Zoom F8 because he's he sits at the big boy table at Thanksgiving. He really does. Uh, Behringer UMC 404 HD. Okay, got it. So, yeah, Bandrew's channel is awesome. <clears throat> and my favorite part of his videos is when he throws the box up. Like, he toss, like, he's like, let's see what's in the box. And he throws it over his shoulder. And either this one or a very recent one, he actually threw it straight up, sort of on purpose. And then he was like, is it going to hit me? Like, he kind of did that. It was pretty funny. See, it's little goofy stuff that people like. That's why when people do podcasts and they're too serious, like... They just try to be serious, like, welcome to the podcaster's lounge. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about podcasting and other things. Our friend Bandrew does reviews. He did the M-Track 2x2. Two two. I mean, I, I know several people who have podcasts in real life, in real life, off the mic, they're hilarious people. And when they get on the mic, they're trying to be professional and it's terrible. Terrible compared to how funny they are in person. 
it's not terrible per se, but it's just anyway. Um, so there you go. So what do you guys think of the big Pandora news? I, it's going to take a little while to roll this out. And one thing I did here, because I listen to, if you're not subscribed to the feed, which is Libsyn's podcast. Um, actually, they did something interesting. I don't know if you knew this. Libsyn said, oh, we have a very special announcement, but you can only hear it if you download the Libsyn, like download the feed app. So it's an app. It's literally an, an 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 iOS or Android app for a podcast show. The feed. That's the feed is the name of the podcast show, and it's an app just for that show. And that's one of the things. If you use Libsyn, they give you a free app. Um, I haven't set mine up because I don't want to ask people to download something else and all this stuff. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe I should. I don't know. But Rob, when he came out with when, when Libsyn was teasing the big news, they said, hey, basically what they said was the only way you can hear this big news is if you download the app for our show. So I did. And it was actually fine. It downloaded, it installed, it worked fine. And I was able to hear, I think they had like a 10 minute episode. You should definitely check it out. 10 minute episode about this release about Pandora is going to start incorporating podcasts and it should be pretty cool. And and so in when he was talking, I don't see it in this. This is just a press release, which is a bunch of mumbo jumbo usually. Um, when Rob was talking, he was talking big numbers, like something like 60 or 70 million listeners in the US use Pandora. I mean, some number that was really big. I mean, that's big. I mean, Spotify might be bigger. I don't know, but that's big. That's a lot of people. So, but again, we don't know how it's going to affect the podcasting world, right? Just because there's a lot of people on a platform doesn't mean podcasting is going to blow up. But but the important thing, in my opinion, is that little by little, podcasting is growing. It's getting into these bigger apps. And it just, it's just, it's like the slow boat to China, man. It's just really blowing up slowly. And that's that's always good news. Because that means the growth is more organic, right? It's not just like, <clears throat> you know, growth that shoots way up and can't sustain that. And then it just shoots right back down. So that's that's one of my favorite things about podcasting, actually, is the fact that... Is the fact that it's, it's slowly growing. So, yeah, Pandora. Um, I know... <clears throat> My wife and I used to pay for Pandora. I don't know what it was. I forget how much it was. Is it like, I think it was like 50 bucks a year, something like that, or, or, or 60 bucks a year. I forget. We used to have it, but then we now we don't have it. But of course, on my phone, I definitely have the app on my phone because I have I like to have all the music and podcasting apps on my phone. Not all the podcasting apps, but a lot of them. So, so that's that. The World Chess Championship. And yes, I did say World Chess. World Chess Championship. They've already played four games. This is Magnus Carlsen on the left here. And this is Fabiano Caruana on the right. And they're playing 12 a 12-game 12 match in London. And they've already played four games. And it's awesome. You can actually watch it live. Uh, Chess.com. Uh, and, and actually, if you're on Twitch. If you're on Twitch. You can actually, chess, chess.com is on Twitch and they literally they're live streaming the coverage of the whole thing. They're not live, you don't see the players, you just see the board and then they talk about it and you see the moves pretty much live. So, yes, that's true, Anthony, totally true. So anyway, I'm, I'm all into the, I mean, this is, the World Chess Championship only takes place every couple years, every two years. So it's kind of a big deal. Now, Magnus on the left has been the champ for about six or seven years. There he is there. That's Magnus. He's known to be the best player in the world. And that's his challenger, Fabiano Caruana, who is an American. So here's what everybody's saying now. If Fabiano Caruana wins, it'll be the first American to be the world chess champion since, you all know, Bobby Fischer, right? Right? Bobby Fischer, one of the greatest players of all time. 
And what's great about Bobby Fischer is uh, that everyone in the chess world, everyone, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you are, everyone reveres Bobby Fischer as one of the best chess players ever. Um, Pandora's not available in New Zealand? Yeah, but you could probably, um, Heather, you could probably still get your podcast added to Pandora, but you might, you probably won't be able to get Pandora in New Zealand, like you said, but for us around the world, you'll be in Pandora, I think. That's actually an interesting question. Anyway, are you, um, are you on, or do you use Libsyn? Heather, sounds like you do. But if you do use Libsyn, Rob said anyone could email him. If you use Libsyn, just email Rob and say, hey, I want to get into Pandora early. I actually didn't email him myself yet, but. So Infinity War, I saw Infinity War with my wife a, a night or two ago. Um, I got to say, this, I liked it a lot. Now, a lot of these movies, I don't, they're okay. Right, they're okay. Even, uh, what was that, Black Panther. Everybody was l just going nutty about Black Panther. I thought it was okay. I I literally didn't think it was so special. But it was good. It was okay. It was a movie. It's good. Um, yeah, so, Rob, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. So, but Infinity War, I don't know. This one, this one seemed really good to me. Um... Anyway, so I just want to know if you guys saw this or what you thought. I know, Ralph, you, that you thought Black Panther was the shizzle, and I, I, I appreciate your opinion. And I thought it was okay. I thought it was... I mean, it was good, all right? Come on, with that production and that budget and all that, it was good. I'll give that. It was good, but I didn't think it was great. So, there you go. This is kind of weird having a little delay. Like, I'm talking about the movie and... <laughs> <laughs> Ralph says, you are no longer my best white friend. Okay, terrific. Barry, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Ralph's just kidding everyone. This is a this is a no no politics, no race, no no nothing zone. This is the lounge. So Ralph, you should be banned for that. Michael B. Jordan. Oh, was he the the, the evil guy? I, I I think so. I think I've heard other people say that that like the bad guy in Black Panther stole the movie. So is that who you're talking about, Anthony? So Lost in Vegas. Have you guys seen this? Have have you guys seen any videos from Lost in Vegas? This is one of my favorite YouTube channels. I even support them through patreon because i these guys are just great they they listen to songs and they it's like a review like like a reaction videos to songs but and i know there's a lot of people doing this now but these guys do it really well and i the, the thing i like um the thing i like the best about them is that they're two hip-hop guys and um and but they listen to a bunch of metal like some of what they listen to is metal and you know because i've been watching them since they pretty much since they started and in the beginning they were so new to metal they didn't know anything but they but they have good ears and they they they're very uh perceptive both of them in different ways it's hard to explain but it's not just someone listening to a song going oh that's pretty cool like they they actually go into it a little and, and pick it apart and and with the feelings and the, the the movement and everything. It's pretty cool. I like that YouTube channel. And the other one is TA with Mitch Ray. He he does technical analysis on crypto and everything. And today's a big day in crypto. Oh, and their reaction to Gin, Ginger's pieces was great. See, Anthony, the only thing I watch with these guys is the metal. The metal and like the hard rock. I, I, well, and Eminem. They did a couple Eminem songs. That they reacted to a couple Eminem songs I watched. But I don't know. Other than that, like the rap and the, like all, a lot of the other stuff, I just, I mean, I get it, but I, I don't, there's like no interest in any popular music for me. Uh, and, and who knows? Maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm whatever. 
Oh, ginger is metal. Okay. So then I'll definitely check it out. Um, yeah, I didn't see that. And I've never heard of ginger. So that's, that's perfect. Thanks for, uh, thanks for throwing that out there. I'll, I'll definitely check out ginger. In fact, I don't know how, can you search within? Oh, is this how I would do it? This one, right? Oh, they did a couple. Yeah, they did a couple. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll watch these. I'm telling you, these guys are good, man. And 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 I and I think they're doing pretty well on Patreon too, which you know what? Good for them, you know. They're putting out a bunch of videos every week and it, it they just it's just good. So, and anyway, here's so here's Bitcoin for today. Uh if anyone follows crypto so you could see it was like this like this like this and all of a sudden today it went all the way down to here look at how far down it went it literally no it even went further than that why doesn't it show because i actually bought some earlier today at 50 about 5400 anyway um yeah anyway crypto is is interesting anybody into crypto anybody anybody <laughs> reminds me of this old opie and anthony clip when they were uh, roasting Rich Voss, when Rich did, uh, it was an old, it was an old tape of Rich Voss doing comedy in a club. Actually, it was, no, it was on TV, some TV, you know, late night TV or something years ago. And, and they, they, uh, they, they listened to it, Opie and Anthony, and, and they had a bunch of other comedians there just to rip, rip it apart. And it, it those kind of roasts were always the funniest on Opie and Anthony because they get pretty brutal. And Rich Voss is a funny guy because he could take it and he can give it a little bit too. And it's just pretty funny. So, um, anyway, what? Um, so this is my post from the Facebook. So what happened was, uh, and if you're not in uh, the Podcasters Hangout group, it's a pretty good group. Actually, I thought it would tell you how many people are in it. I think it's about 10,000 people, maybe more. Maybe like twelve or 13,000 people. Uh, anyway, my post was... What I did recently is I went to... I, I got a service where I could actually see all my podcast reviews. So you know like when you go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever they're calling it. It's idiots. Um, when you go here... You can see like, okay, for my show, it says 25 ratings and it's average is about four and a half stars or wait, what happened? Oh, it averages 4.7 stars, whatever. Okay, fine. So those wait, 25. Is that new? Cause when I downloaded them, I only got 16. Anyway, have you guys, oh, Heather says there's 8,100 people in the podcasters hangout group yeah okay yeah there's a couple other groups that are bigger than that one i think podcast movement i believe is bigger than that and so is um there's another one run by a woman who i talked to once um i forget anyway that one's it's okay um but podcasters hangout is is better um in my opinion IMO, right? That's what that means. So anyway, when I got the ratings, it said I only got 16 ratings. So maybe maybe a bunch more people reviewed my show. Is that possible? Let me try this. Let me try this live. Podcast, this is what I used. Podcastreviews.me. And... Did I log? What the? Can I log in? Member login. Okay. Wow, that's it's so big on my screen. It's crazy. Um, I'm not a robot. Mm-hmm. All right. So if I go here, podcastreviews.me. I think this guy Ravi does this. Anyway, here go to my podcasts, and you have to kind of have to. You don't have to. You just have to find your podcast and and do that. Then you just click see reviews. See now it's going and getting them. Yeah, it says sixteen found. Anyway, I looked through all sixteen, and there was one that was, um, 
a one star review it was it was a brutal review and 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 the thing I didn't like about it was that it it was just basically bashing my guest and saying that my guest didn't know anything and that kind of thing and and then basically in the same breath said kind of bashed the show as well I mean we might as well look at it right we're here sorry I'm scrolling yes wow the incompetence. I have never been so ashamed of another female engineer as I have this Kate woman. Poor quality, little intelligence. If you are educate, if you are educated in audio or even want to be, do not let this show teach you anything. So, this I'm, I'm guessing it's a woman. She said, "Do not let this show teach you anything." I would have felt better if she said this episode. But not only did she bash my guest but she also bashed bashed the show and so it's okay so what i did was <laughs> yeah ralph saying i meant to give you two stars not one um brandon gonzalez what's up brother barry brandon's here yeah oh yeah i know brandon is the man <laughs> you ever you ever do that like with a with a one kilohertz tone sound clip like bleep yourself like that it's pretty fun anyway I went I, I posted about it and I was like how do you handle it when someone criticizes your podcast because I don't know like I I um I'm not saying my show is like above reproach or anything but like my show it's just geeky talking about audio the audio engineering aspects of podcast production. And there's no other show like my show. There's no other show that discusses what my show discusses. There just isn't. So, you know, in, in the way that I do it and the, with the focus I have, right? I'm not saying there's not other audio engineers in podcasting. There is. Um, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to take that. So anyway, I guess uh, if you guys have any comments about that, go ahead. Yeah, Ralph is trying to start, just so everyone knows, I have the Podcast Engineering School. See this? And Ralph, jokingly, started the Podcast Engineering Academy, and he's going to take all my business. He's going to take all my students, so. We're going to fight, Ralph. So this Ezo board, I don't know if you saw this. Um, I, I didn't really look at this, but design driven acoustics like look at this like you, you know these squares on the wall uh well in an office space you, you know these little um these little panels get attached in different places that actually absorb sound uh, like in the ceiling areas you can get them um and by the way just from looking at this website and the different things they have i guarantee these things are so expensive you'll never buy one and neither will i Right, I could be wrong, but see, then you got it. This is one of those sites where you can't buy it right on the site, so you got to click on dealers and then find a dealer and then go there and then look at stuff. And that's not the easiest thing to do, right? So, so happy everybody's here, chilling in the podcasters' lounge, drinking iced tea. You guys got any questions? Please speak up, Brandon. How's it going lately, man? Um, so there you go. And I know there's a bunch of different companies that make these kind of materials. So it's just kind of interesting. I mean, because some people are really into like how things look. Like I'm not one of them. Um, some people, maybe you're one of them, who it, like everything has to look good, and it's it's nice. It's it's nice for things to look good. My personality is I I'm I'm always worried about the functionality and the the uh, the ease of use and things like that. So anyway, um, anyway, I, hey, hey Ralph, you want to play a chess game real quick? We should play a ch we should play a chess game on on the stream, dude. See everyone, this is Ralph M Rivera. Look at him. Oh, your name's even in here, dude. Challenge to play. Yes. Can I challenge Ralph? Time. No, I don't want to do 
that. I want to do... I don't want to do daily. I want to do... I want to do a live game. How do I do that? Ralph, let me know if you're up for a game right now, live. Then we'll play. Like a three-minute game. Um, all right. My posture. Your posture. How important is it for podcasters? Well, I don't know why I'm bringing this up. This is just one of those things that lately, like, I kind of realized that sometimes my posture is not really good. And so, like, what I'll do is I'll, like, I, I don't know how to say it, but, like, swivel my hips a little forward. And that sort of brings in my stomach. And then it also stretches my back a little. And I feel like that's like a more natural, healthier alignment rather than like my hips going back and like my stomach coming out, right? I mean, do you guys have good posture? I mean, seriously. And are you good breathers? Right? Breathe. I, I literally been ever since I saw the Wim Hof video about you can breathe and, um, you know, then hold your breath for a long time. I've been taking more deep breaths lately and it actually helps me. Like, I just feel more energized. It's just cool. I don't know. So do you breathe well? Now, Heather asks, what are your thoughts on standing desks? Uh, yeah, sounds great. Um, I, I, I wish I had one sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, standing desks are good. I think there's a couple good brands and yeah, it's great. Um, I think someday I'll have one. And then the only thing that I thought of that I'm going to have to consider is the cables, like, cause I have certain cables running on the floor and then up onto the desk. And so if, I, if the desk is going up and down, it might pull these cables, you know, and it, I, so anyway, I, that's probably not a hard thing to take into consideration and do it right, but that's just what came to my mind. But yeah, standing desks. I don't know. Ralph, do you have a standing desk or do you have a, a desk on your treadmill or something? So Heather says she's a terrible breather. She had asthma as a kid and still a shallow breather. Yeah. So just consciously lately, I've been like just taking really deep breaths. And uh, one thing he said was take a really deep breath, like really deep and then just blow it out normal. Like you don't have to blow it out all the way until you're <laughs> until you're like that. So just deep breath, let it out normal, deep breath, keep doing that. That's what I do. Yeah, see Ralph has a Ralph has a desk on his treadmill. A f What's a fatigur mat? Ralph. And by the way, I would love Ralph to see Ralph do a show from his treadmill desk. Right? Wouldn't you? Seriously. All right. So that's enough about posture and breathing, but it's so important, right? Oh, a fatigue mat. So a fatigue mat. What? Wait. So is that like a little spongy mat that you stand on to like help absorb the shock of your knees and stuff? Kind of like at the shows, like last year at NAB in the podcast pavilion. Actually, any show where Blueberry has a booth. Yeah. They get like this extra padding in their booth. And like when you walk into their booth, it's like all of a sudden you're like, whoa, this is like, it just fe night, it's like cushiony and it just feels better. It's not like a hard floor, and uh, yeah. And so, um, what's I, I can't think of his name? Todd Cochran. He told me he's like, yeah. He's like, this is this is a secret to doing shows. If you pay a little extra to get the padding, and then over like the f you know three or four days of standing on it. It really helps your joints and stuff, so. Anthony does breathing exercises he learned from strength camp. That's cool. Right? Yeah, breathing is, come on. All right, Ralph, you, if you're up for a chess game, let me know. Um, or else, you know what? Maybe I'll just play one real quick, but podcasting deal alerts. This is Daniel, one of Daniel J. Lewis's um, creations, where if you get on this list, it's free and and... He, I don't know what he did. He set up a bunch of alerts on a lot of big, you know, equipment sites. And, and so, and so when you, you'll get emails every now and then, not, it's not even too many emails, but like when, when he finds something that's on sale for a really good deal, he'll send you an email and he'll be like, Hey, right now at B and H, this thing is on sale for 
40% off. Uh, it's just pretty cool, man. It's just pretty cool to get these little alerts. So if you're not signed up for this, it's, um, well, the audacity to podcast.com slash deals and, a, and all the links of everything I talk about are going to be in the, in the description afterwards. Um, yeah. So, oh, look at this. Here we go. Wait a minute. Except chat. Wait, is this a... Wait, but this is a day. No, Ralph, I want to, um, hold on a second. This is like several, a several day game. I want to play one. Hold on. I want to play one where custom challenge versus Buddha nature. Yeah, here we go. Now, we're, all right, I'm going to challenge you for a three, three minutes with two second increment. And the rating, we'll do unrated, and we'll do regular chess unrated. Okay. So, Ralph, there you go. Accept that. And yes, this is the Podcaster's Lounge. So picture us all sitting in these deep, comfortable chairs. Some people sipping their beverage of choice. And, and, and then, you know, there's a chess board, and, and me and Ralph are really like, you know high highbrow um members of the club and we're gonna we're gonna play a game so go ahead ralph ralph you accepted but you didn't move yet dude oh no it's gonna auto abort dude uh-oh i'm gonna rematch him all right ralph you're white dude there we go. All right. Yeah, see, this is... So, again, I think we're in a club, me and Ralph, and you, and everyone who's here. By the way, do you, do you guys play chess much? Ever? And I don't know what it is with this music. I have to figure out a way where I can, like, when I hear a song like that that I don't really love so much, like, I wish I could make a note to, like, not play that again. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't know how to do it with this pretzel program. I don't know how to do it. But, yeah, you guys can see the board pretty good, right? So, yeah, I'm on the bottom. I'm black. And Ralph is at the top, Mr. Buddha Nature. And all right, he wants to trade. See, you can pre-move. See, that's what I did. You pre-move. So, um, so whenever whenever he moves, I automatically move. So it's a pretty cool way to do it. So, so I grew up playing chess. Uh, well, I didn't grow up playing chess. Sorry, I play started playing chess in high school, which is very late. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oops. Um, I so I started playing chess in high school, and um, that's really late to start playing chess. Like, if you're really going to be a chess player, you should start playing when you're like literally five. All the great players in the world, they started playing chess when they were like five years old. And so I started in high school. So I got the rules and I understood it. But and I played and but I was okay, but I wasn't great. And I'm still not great. Um I think I think I might be uh Huh. Double check, see, with the rook. Oh, can I make arrows? Oh. Double check with the rook and the and the bishop double check means you have to move your king right that's because you, you you can't block check because you'll still be in check from the other one but um <laughs> so
So, in high school, I was playing chess, and I wasn't that good, but we played a couple tournaments, and... I don't know what's up with this music. What music are they playing, man? And... We used to go to other schools. We used to get on the bus, go to other schools, and play some chess, like a ch like, like a chess match between another school. And so that was always fun. You can imagine going to um, going to other schools and um, playing playing their chess team. And and well, we did some things which I can't tell you, but. Anyway, I, um, I don't know what I'm doing here. All I know is I got to get my other rook in the game. So, so one time we had a chess tournament. There's, see, this is a story I could tell. I've never told this story. Like, I've never told this story, um, on like like in a podcast or online or anywhere we we had this chess tournament at Hackettstown High School which is near right near my high school and and so what happened was we went to the high school and it was a tournament so it wasn't like a head on match between schools it was just an open tournament and i played and i ended up my last game and I don't know how well I did. I probably didn't do that good. But anyway, I, last game, I played the best player from this other school, which was Mendham. And so, oh, Ralph, you hung your queen, dude. Um, I played this guy from Mendham. And he was their best player. So he was, like, the best player from this high school. And I was, like, literally the last player place player from my high school and so I played him and I actually was able to uh, kind of trick him in, in toward the end I tricked him with a back rank mate and it was it was really awesome to win like that um, you know because I beat somebody who was good And, you know, like Ralph, Ralph's getting low on time. Look at him, 15 seconds. I'm going to pre-move. Ralph, dude. Where's he going to go? Oh. Um, all right, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. We're going to get a runner. Look, I'm pre-moving all the way, getting a queen, baby. As long as Ralph doesn't come down here. Maybe I'll let him get a queen, too. Ralph! Oh, he lost on time! Oh, man. All right. Well, we continue with the... Thank you for the game, Mr. Ralph M. Rivera. We continue with the podcaster's lounge, posture and breathing and podcasting deals. And We talked about this last week, actually, from Daniel J. Lewis. He, his show was kicked from Apple Podcasts and all this stuff. Anyway, this is a great article with a lot of good insights in there so this is descript this is um oh you're gonna be banned my friend if you use that language so descript is well it says a word processor with a play button so here's the deal does it show Right? First it does transcribing and then you get the text. And then what happens is you can actually go into the text. Does it show it? I'm sorry, I'm whipping around here. Yeah, see right here, it shows. Look at this. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. In the text editor, you literally highlight quick and brown if you want to remove that and you delete it. And in the back end, Descript will delete the audio and put it together now here's the problem with this as you can um as you can imagine what the heck music is playing this stream 
This is terrible. Come on, pretzel. Anyway, you can see the problem with this is that the edit points, the, the thing with audio editing, it's very precise. I mean, you have to cut at the right time or else you're gonna cut somebody's breath in half. You know, <gasps> their breath, if you cut it in half, it'll sound really weird. And, and the word, the beginning of a word, the end of a word, like, it's especially the what they're showing here. This is, there's no way that this is gonna be a, a, a transparent edit. It's gonna be like, the fox jumped over, like it's gonna be terrible, I guarantee it. Because it just, audio editing is one of those precise things you have to, it has to be right, if you're gonna do it right. Now, you could chop it up and have it be terrible, if you want. That's fine, but, uh, so yeah, one, one gentleman brought this up at the meetup last night and he asked about this, and look, I think it's a great idea. I just think that, you gotta be real careful about this. Now, wh what I think would be a great use of this is if you were gonna cut out like a whole paragraph or like five paragraphs. Let's say you asked the question and someone answered and you're like, oh, I wanna get rid of all that. That would, that would probably work. But even then, some of the breaths might get cut off funny. So anyway, it's called Descript. And I, I heard about it and I haven't tried it. Um, I, and honestly, I don't even know if it's worth trying. For me. For me. I don't know if it's worth trying. I just have to do everything manually, so. Blueberry statistics requirements. So this is, you know, Blueberry and Libsyn and a few others are very active in the the podcasting statistics. And I think there's some organization, I forget what it's called, where it's like a governing body which is sort of deciding on statistics and how they're measured, right? Because because with podcast download statistics, there's many ways to measure it, but they're trying to come up with the most accurate and most meaningful ways to measure downloads. So part of it is, um, well, one thing they recommend is no preloading in players. So if you have a web page and your podcast is embedded there, and if someone goes to that web page, if, if that player is programmed to preload, like load that audio, then I think what they're saying is that is gonna count as a download. But maybe the person doesn't even click play. So then that's really not a download, right? Okay, no auto playing. Well, that's the same thing. Like if you go to a website and it's just auto playing, which as you all know, auto playing is the worst thing ever. And believe it or not, some people still do that. They'll put like a video or a podcast on their page that auto plays. And it's like, doesn't everyone know that that is the most annoying thing in the world? Um, well, the ID three V two tags. Um, so, okay. So it says ID three version one tags require the entire episode to be downloaded before the tags can be read. So for the ID three version two, it can probably can read the tag even before it's downloaded. Michael, the sound guy, dude, he's here. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, forget it. There's no activity, no giggle, no nothing. No, no way. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. Look at this guy, Mr. Michael Helms. Shows up on the stream, dude. All right, and then the last thing here is one minute within the first two megabytes. It says, in order to accurately count podcast episode plays, at least one minute of audio must be downloaded to be recognized as consumable. To meet this guideline, the first minute of audio must be downloaded within the first two megabytes of the audio file. I, I've never heard this before. I just read this today. This can be achieved by adhering to the following. Uh, your bit rate, your MP3 bit rate must be 192 kbps or lower. Yeah, Anthony, people can inflate with the autoplay, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Barry clips, Mr. Michael Helms. Um, so yeah, if, if you keep your podcast in the normal resolution of 128 kbps for stereo or 90, or actually 64 
is the standard sort of for mono. I, we're not having any luck with music today, are we? This is a 17 minute song with a gong. Come on. Oh, well, oh, I see, I should just thumbs down it. Maybe that'll make sure they don't play it again. See, I'm an idiot. All right, anyway, and your artwork saved to your ID3 tag must be at most 300 kilobytes. So I've never heard this before. So your ID3 artwork should be at most 300 kilobytes. See, now I'm interested to see what mine is. So if we look at shows, TPES, logo, what's my 1200 by 1200? 373 kilobytes. Oh, it's not on the screen for you guys. There we go. Wait, now it's not on the screen either. See? This is the artwork I have for uh, my show, and it's 1200 by 1200. This is the actual artwork that I add to the MP3 file, the MP3 tag, you know? And so, anyway, it's not a big deal. Ralph, what are you posting music, Ralph? What is that? <laughs> oh no. I'm not gonna click that, I don't know what it is. Beware everyone, watch out for this Ralph Rivera guy. All right, so anyway, hopefully people that are listening to your podcast are downloading more than the first minute. And and so, and that's the one thing with these, with these um, yeah, but it, Ralph, it might be a good track, but it might not be uh, able to be played on YouTube and Twitch and all that. Now, you can play any music live, but on the playback is when they're going to block it and mute it, and they'll mute my stream. So I you gotta, I got to be real careful about music. Uh, unless, you know, it's some... Yeah, unless you know that it's a track that has already been approved by YouTube and Twitch... You can't play it on your stream. You can play it on your stream, but later on, you like when YouTube posts the video of it, they're they're literally gonna mute all that audio. And sometimes they'll mute up to a half an hour. They actually have the right, if they detect some copywritten music, they can mute your whole video for up to 30 minutes. So you gotta be careful with streaming, with music. That's why I use this pretzel. This is uh it's it's a it plays music. It's got a bunch of music, a lot of hours of music, and it's all um, stream friendly. So it's not going to get flagged anywhere, even on playback and all that stuff. So all right, so there's some podcasting statistics stuff. I mean, do you guys go nutty with statistics? I mean, I know I don't. I mean, I'm you know. In fact, I you know what I just looked at. I went to the Apple Podcasts back end, which, what, what do they call it? Uh, Podcasts Connect. And I went in there and I looked at some data for the first time. And uh, yeah, I mean, apparently, I think the average person gets like 70% through my, my episodes, uh, you know, on average, which I don't know if that's good. I really don't know. I don't study statistics. I mean, because because most people who know what they're talking about will tell you the statistics are one thing, but then there's like, what does it mean? Like, okay, let's say, let's just, well, it's like the whole, um, you know, new and noteworthy, right? What if your show is in new and noteworthy, but it doesn't get any more downloads? Then what good is it? And it's the same thing is like, what if my show all of a sudden had a million downloads? So what? Like now, if that meant that like a thousand people are going to enroll in my school, then that's when I'm going to be like, oh my God. And I'm going to have to hire a bunch of you to edit some podcasts for me. <laughs> uh, so you know what I mean? So the download numbers are one thing, but it's, they're not the important thing. The important thing is how it affects your bottom line, right? Anthony says, I have more interest in follower num number over plays. Makes sense. Yeah, and I think it's it, it's all good information. But then what what uh, conclusion do you come to? That's the, that's the question, right? 
So David Hooper, you guys know David Hooper? He was on my show. He was on my, look, check this out. When was he on my show? He was on my show. This is going to freak you out. It, yeah, episode five. Episode five, which was April 7th of 2016. He was on my show. Great guy. I, I see him at all the events too. He might come to NAB, maybe. Um, so he wrote a Medium article saying, here's the problem with podcast advertising. Thought you could get away with a lame ad read for something you've never used? This woman's not buying it. So she tweeted, Emily Fleming tweeted, Everyone has a podcast, including famous actors and comedians, but not one of y'all can sound like you convincingly own a Casper mattress. Right? All right, we'll leave that playing. So, right? And nobody who hears you read generic company-provided talking points in your podcast advertising is buying what you're selling either. Right, Heather, that's interesting. Yeah, if somebody listens to some of your episode and then leaves and comes back. I believe some players, I, 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 I would even say most players will actually remember and they will count that as one download even if you listen multiple times I think but that's a pretty uh, that's an advanced question right there but yeah so podcast advertising look if you want to uh, have Casper mattresses as your as your uh, I'm sorry what is with this music unbelievable un -ing believable See, that's how you can curse without cursing, all right? So, look, all these talking points, right? So, it's in, it's so funny. These talking points make us lazy. The same thing happens when a guest sends you recommended questions before an interview. Advertisers, like guests, are trying to help. They're also trying to control the message they send out. They mean well, but does anybody think about natural geometry or the right amounts of both sink and bounce when buying a mattress? No. No. People buying mattresses want a good night's sleep. They want to wake up refreshed. So he basically says the best, if you're going to do a Casper mattress commercial, you should be sleeping on a Casper mattress. Then he quotes Pat Flynn. Final thoughts. The foundation of podcast advertising is money. Without money, an advertisement is just a recommendation. Podcasting is personal. You have a relationship with people listening to you that is much more intimate than the relationships they have with other media. Your listeners can tell when you're faking it. Because of this, you need to actually believe in what you're selling to get the results for your sponsor. Beyond that, you need to communicate your belief through stories and personal experiences, not company-provided talking points. And and it and it helps if you're enthusiastic. That's a typo. It helps if you're enthusiastic, right? Yep. All right. So David Hooper, right? Is that true? It's so true. And and that's one reason That's one of the, one small reason why I don't have any sponsors uh, yet. I I may, I may, but for me to have a sponsor, it's got to be the right thing and everything. Do you guys have sponsors in your shows? Have you ever almost had a sponsor? Have you ever got an offer that someone wanted to sponsor your show? It's kind of a tricky little landscape, isn't it? Right? People want to give you money, but usually they don't want to give you that much money. And then if you're going to talk about, if you're going to promote someone else's product, I mean, that, it almost taints your show, in my opinion. Now, I understand business. I understand it has to happen. But, like, there's something really good in podcasting. There's something great about when someone has a podcast and it's just them and it's their show. And they're not selling anything. They're not trying to be, you know, whatever. They're not trying to, you know, get you to buy things or things like that. Um, here's Ralph Rivera with his mind in the gutter. We had such lovely streams, Ralph, before you got here. Although that's a funny joke. And Beavis and Butthead style. Which I just watched all these Beavis and Butthead episodes of uh you know recently so 
Anthony gets offers to try archery products. Most come with the expectation of a positive review, so I turn them down. Yeah, that's another thing, right? People be like, oh, here's our product. Can you talk about it on the podcast? And it's like, yeah, well, what if I hate it? I'm going to bash the crap out of it. And then that that's weird then. They gave you something free. They're expecting something. It's very weird, man. I'm telling you, the podcast advertising thing is weird. Even if it's corporate, it's still weird, man. Like when you tune into these big popular shows and then they're just promoting crap. It's like, who wants to hear that? Honestly, if people were honest, nobody wants to hear that crap. Seriously, that's what that's the best thing about independent podcasters is that it's just you and me, man. It's just us creating stuff, creating podcast episodes. Great. Mike had a manufacturer send him some headphone ear pad replacements free of charge. They wanted me to try them out. Well, there you go. They just want to try them out. Ralph's going to get some aliens to sponsor his show. Ah, oh, did you see the, uh, This was, uh, yeah, it was in Ireland very recently. A couple pilots saw a UFO. I don't know who else saw it, but yeah. So for all you, uh, believers. Yeah. And the, and the day, and the day, uh, disclosure comes, everyone else is going to have a hard time accepting it. All right. What is this one? The eight types of podcast formats. Well, before we look at this, what is the format of your show? As we listen to this, I can't believe the music. This is, this is the, the sixth Podcasters Lounge stream. The first five, I would play music and it was okay. It was just music in the background, nothing crazy. For some reason, <laughs> this stream, the music. Thank you, Ralph. Where is it? Where is it? It's a mess. Thank you, Barry. Anthony, yours is conversation-based. That's cool. As opposed to interview-based, I guess. Um, I know Ralph M. Rivera's podcast, which he hasn't put out an episode in a long time. He, le he left all his listeners hanging. Everyone's like, hanging. We're waiting for Ralph. Um, all right, so you got the recycled. What is recycled? Might be the most common... It includes all content that is not natively a podcast. This content was recorded and then repurposed as a podcast. Oh, okay. For example, ra radio stations, podcasts are just recycled broadcasts. Okay. Well, but... Okay. Anthony, right? Yeah, Michael the Sound Guy, he does interviews. And we've promoted your show, I think, on almost every lounge so far, Mike. Michael the Sound Guy, the Location Sound Podcast. See, I already been searching for it. Look at this. And Mike Helms, I oh yeah, see, I thought so. You, you, well, welcome. Now now Mike Helms is uh well, he had a show before this, but this show I know you started the Location Sound Podcast. Uh, and you were going strong. You did not miss one week, uh, but recently you did. So, but that's very normal. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm these days I'm doing every other week as well. So, you know, I think as long as you do about, you know, every other week, that's enough to keep it going. Like, I don't have anything wrong with doing every week, but it's a lot of work, you know, so. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I may I apologize <laughs> for the rubbish music that is coming out of this pretzel app today. Okay. Uh, all right. Another format is fiction, right? That's just, just a fictional story. We get, we get that. The explainer. It's a type of educational podcast that explores a single or few topics in each episode. All right. The explainer, the round table. Roundtable discussions. Okay, that makes that's pretty obvious. Interview. Well, that's the most popular. 
Well, I would think it's the most popular, but yeah. What? This is all right. Let's see how many, and I'm gonna thumbs down in a row. All right, all right. Another podcast format is magazine. Highly produced. They have various segments. Sometimes they will have a mix of interviews, news, or commentary. These shows are very hard to make as an amateur podcaster. Okay. New new reader. This format is usually just one person reading the news to you. Why does it say new reader? Should be news reader. No. What the? What is this like a like a like a chick flick movie? The guy's like, I love you. I love. I, oh, I just love you. <laughs> what? It's supposed to be background music, dude. <laughs> yeah, Michael Helms was going strong. They started. Oh, oh, I see. A oh, little, the old company computer versus your own computer situation. All right. And then a documentary. This format has become hugely popular. Serial. Anybody listen to the second season of Serial? Or not the second or third, whatever. Whatever recently Serial came out. Or is it still coming out? Because I listened to it. And I don't know. I tried listening to it. I should put it that way. I tried listening and it was just boring. And this is... Yep, what are we up to? Like five in a row? See, it's the chill station. Wait, is this the station I normally play? Yeah, I thought it was the chill. Right? It's not upbeat, it's not mixed, it's not hype, it's not ambient. It was chill. I mean, this is, this is what, six in a row? Just rubbish. So anyway, kind, kind of like the, the latest serial. I, well, I can't say that's rubbish. <laughs> I don't know if you guys li listen to it. I mean, okay, fine. I'm sure it's well made, but it's like the first one was so interesting of a story. It, it really hooked you and, and nothing they've done since then is even remotely close to that first one. I mean, what they did in the first one was, as a lot of people like to say, they caught lightning in a bottle, right? It's a very rare occurrence that you create something that is just really, really awesome and takes off and boom, it's like a phenomenon. That You can't have that happen every time, right? That's like a, that's like a, probably like a once in a lifetime thing or once in every 10 years thing. Right? For something to be that good and pop that good. All right. So there's your 10 types or sorry, your eight types of podcast formats. And each one takes a different amount of work too. All right. I didn't read this, but I thought this was interesting. It's supposed to be the Google of sound. Audio Burst wants to map the internet we hear. This Israeli startup navigates through millions of hours of content from the podcast industry. And Audio Burst CEO Amir Hirsch wants to take on the two largest competitors in the smart speaker domain, Google and Amazon, and believes he is building a huge empire. All right, well, what does the thing do? All right, imagine this. Okay, imagine this. You open your favorite radio app, type the words Benjamin Netanyahu or Gal Gadot in the search field, and you instantly get every soundbite where they're mentioned in the search results. The app is accessible on your mobile phone, through your car, whatever, whatever. So what are they going to do? Like chop up bits of audio into what they think are sound or sound clips of different people speaking? With the help of sophisticated search engines, today's mobile devices allow us to find almost any scrap of text, video, or image on the internet in seconds, but return no results if what we're looking for is hidden in the depths of podcast or onla uh, online radio stream. On iTunes alone, there are a lot of podcasts, yada, yada, yada. That's where Tel Aviv startup Audio Burst comes into the picture. The company was founded in 2015. Um, okay. Oh, here's a graph, though. 
Percentage of podcast listeners per country. South Korea. 58% of South Koreans listen to podcasts. All right, U.S. is 33. All right, okay. Now, audio podcast consumption in the U.S. Well, we know we've seen this graph before. I've seen this, right? Nice and slow and steady. So that's consumption in the U.S. And here's advertising revenue in the U.S., which, okay, whatever. We just talked about advertising, but... But it's going up a lot. That's good. So anyway, I, I don't know how they're going to do this, but this I'm I'm very suspect of this. I mean, hey, if they can do it and it works, that's awesome. I mean, if I want to, you know, if I have a favorite author or anyone or um, that I want to hear something on, or I would think I would think better than searching for someone's name would be searching for like a topic. But that would be way harder to implement, right? All right. Well, there it is. Audio burst. Okay. Okay. Terrific. All right. Conan O'Brien. I know you guys are like, look, I know you guys. Every night you go to bed, you're like, oh, I wish the Conan O'Brien podcast would come out soon. Mm, I wish. Well, it's coming out soon. And yeah. Anyway, he's got a bunch of big guests. And okay, fine. You know what? This is good. You know, you know, one of the reasons... Well, let me ask you this. Do you think this is good for celebrities and, you know, high-profile people to come out and just have their own podcast? Do you think it's good? Yes or no? Let me see it in the chat. Yes or no? And then... I'm going to tell you why I think the answer is yes. I think it's really good. And here's why. Because... There's probably a bunch, uh, probably many people who like Conan O'Brien and who also have never listened to a podcast before in their life. And when they find out that Conan O'Brien has a podcast, they're going to come to that moment in their life, which we all came to at one point, like, hey, I want to listen to a podcast. How the hell do I do that? Then they're going to figure it out, right? It's not hard, but they're going to have to figure it out. Now, once they're listening to podcasts, now they can listen to any podcast, right? Now they got the app on their phone. Boom. Wow, the, I'm, I'm really got a lot of engagement here. <laughs> Thanks, Michael, the sound guy. Yeah, so anyway, Conan O'Brien's show. And and look, good, look, Conan O'Brien, he's been hosting late night TV forever. And he still does, doesn't he? Or no? I don't even know. The point is, he knows how to host the show and move the energy along and all that, right? I mean, you, you know, he's been in TV many years. Exactly. It draws attention to the podcast industry. All right, Michael Helms and everyone else who's a tech geek of podcasting, look at this. The Apollo X. All right, I'm going to... I'm going to deal with this song that's playing now but oh my god this is terrible i gotta figure something out i i might have to go through and pre-select songs and i don't know how to do that but the apollo x well look universal audio they make a lot of audio gear and plugins and things and they're it's it's high-end stuff this is this is expensive stuff and now apparently they have an um the apollo x yeah heather they make great stuff and and so the Apollo X, they have a bunch of different uh, interfaces. So this one right here, this is a this is an audio interface. It has eight eight XLR inputs on the back. You know, you can see the eight meters here, and it's great. You can get eight eight microphones into your computer and and all that. And it's really high quality mic pre's. And the best thing about uh, Universal Audio stuff is that, well, specifically these Apollo units, they have DSPs on board, so which DSPs are digital signal processors. So they they actually the plugins, the Universal Audio plugins, they actually run inside this unit, not on your computer. They run inside this unit, so that takes the load off your computer. So now your computer doesn't have to process all the plugins. It's being done by this unit. And anyway, they got a bunch of different kinds, like the Apollo X6 and the Apollo X8 and the 8XP and well, here we go.
<laughs> you knew I was going to thumbs down that one. So anyway, Apollo, make great stuff. I Actually, this one, this, this 8P, well, now it's called the X8P. This is the one I almost bought and I, I would want, but... Uh, excuse me? Did you hear that? It said the voicemail box of Kino. Oh my god. Alright, maybe I could play some match the mix. Maybe that's what I need to do. You know what? Forget this. We're gonna play some match the mix. You guys ready? Come on. Alright. Now, percentage of accuracy. What do you think I'm gonna get? And if you haven't seen me play this game, this game is very simple. You, They're gonna play me a, a sample track and then I'm going to be able to... Then they're going to play another of the same track, which is kind of like messed up with EQ. And I have to use the EQ to fix it. I have to match the second sound with the original sound. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's do it. All right, I'm going with that. Yes, Michael Helms, you heard it right. All right, let's see. I'm going to submit it. 89! Oh, Heather was almost right. Yeah, oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 89. All right, we're going to the next level. Look, now it's three sliders. That's right. All right, here we go. What do you think I'll get on this one? Huh? Nine. Well, I got 89. That was 89 is pretty good. The highest I ever got was, what was it, 96? 96%? It wasn't 100, right? I think it was 96. And the lowest I ever got, I think, was like 71, which is still not horrendous. But um, anyway, I'm going to turn up my headphones a little bit. All right. Heather Guess is 88. Mike Helms, do you have a guess? Anyone? Bueller? Yeah, 96. Yeah, right? I think it was 96. All right, here we go. If Mike Helms, anyone wants to guess, put it in the chat. Okay, here we go. Well, I, I don't know. I wish I wanted to keep it rolling, but as I said previous times, I only want to do like eight bars of listening and tweak, and I don't want to go on forever because then it gets boring. But all right, let me submit it. Oh, that hurts. 65. Oh, even the color was, was yellow. It's like, oh. Well, see, I was more right. I had, I had 600 pulled down a little more, which was more correct. And I had the high end cranked up a little too much, but all right. You know what? Let's do this. Enough of this. Yeah, oof is right.
Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to go through another eight bars, but anyway, here we go. Oh! Oh, that's... Wow. Wow. You lose. You get nothing. <laughs> oh, right? See, I had I had this down a little more. I pushed it up. But I... There was something weird going on in the low mids there. Anyway, let's move on. Or should I redeem myself? Should I revenge myself? I don't know. I know. I'm crying too. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it. I got I gotta end on a good note. This is not Yeah, I gotta end on a good note, right? This is I can't do this. 82, all right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm I'm not done. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping this time. I don't feel good about this one. <laughs> See, it was a little more, I was on the right track, just a little more subtle. All right, last one. Here we go. Oh, sorry. I think the tab, I was trying to get the hot key for to change it. I think it's the tab key. I'm now I'm getting just getting confused. Yeah. Not bad. Anyway, it's a fun game. I got my headphones cranked up a little loud there. A little bit loud. All right. Well, this is we still got about 15 minutes left in the stream. In the lounge. Are you guys lounging? I hope you're lounging. Look, I've almost drank this entire iced tea. So, oh yeah, the Location Sound Podcast. But wait, this is your lips and Mike. This isn't your, uh... yeah, this is it. This is your website. Mm -hmm. This is where you want everybody to go. Oh yeah. 
There it is, Location Sound Podcast. You have a newsletter? I'm not in your newsletter. Dude. Really? I didn't know Mike Helms had a newsletter. Are you kidding me? I'm signing up for that. Are you kidding? Let's see what it says. Oh. Oh, here it is. It says, thank you. Your sign-up request was successful. Yes. All right, I'm going to confirm it. All right, we played some chess with Ralph Rivera. He's not here anymore. Ralph has quite the mouth on him. Jeez. Where was... uh? Yeah, here we go. What's Bitcoin at now? 5,800. Is it four-hour candles? Yeah. So there you go. So, by the way, PodFest. By the way, absolutely, 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 absolutely. Hey, Mike, you missed in the beginning of the show. I did. I had my whole list of stalling tactics as a guest. Anyway, uh, PodFest Hey, someone I know lives in Orlando. Somebody, uh, Miguel, the lounge guy, something like that. Something like that. Anyway, <laughs> Miguel, the lounge guy. That was, that's pretty, that's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. Podfest in Orlando in March. I'll be there. If you're going, let's hang out. I'll have a booth and everything and then of course podcast movement which is also in orlando coincidence hmm also in orlando in august when it's supposed to be really hot and hopefully there's no hurricanes no not hurricanes yeah hurricanes yeah hurricane right hurricanes so there you go and nab Not BNAB. The NAB show, you know, is April 6th to the 11th. And we are going to be in the podcast pavilion. And you know what? Where's the... Um, hold on a second. I have the link to this somewhere. Um, wait, what the... All right, good. Now you guys see me. Oh, but look at that. Look at this terrible layout. Oh, this is from last time. Can I move this? Wait, how can I? All right, I'm confused. I'm I'm such a beginning streamer, right? Anyway, you guys get the idea. But I wanted to I wanted to go into my Google Drive and get a link real quick. That's why I wanted to put the the camera on me. Uh conferences. NAB Vegas. Yeah, the Ask the Expert booth. That's where we're going to be. If you weren't aware. Um, yeah, and we're Central Hall. All right, I'm going to switch back over now. All right, now you can see it. Now, so this is Central Hall. And you can see see this big booth here. That's Canon USA. And this big one in the corner is Sony. Those are the two. Those booths are like... Well, it's not like a city block, but it, they're huge. They are huge booths. And see this blinking blue dot over here? It's going to blink. Yep, there it is, blinking. So that's the podcast pavilion. So what's cool is, see the arrows up here say North Hall, and this is kind of like the central lobby. So this is like a main corridor that people walk. They come in here. And then they kind of come through here and go into the into the main this hall. So this year the podcast pavilion is in a great spot. So I'm gonna zoom in. And whoop. So there you have it. Oh, we're next to the Beijing Pavilion. What does that mean? Academy of Broadcasting Science. That's pretty cool. Up oh, here's Comrex. There they make um bunch of broadcasting gear so that's good then here's the podcast pavilion area this whole big area and you have samson 
down here and you have this is where the ask the experts going to be then you have blueberry and libsyn and then they have a podcast studio then you have heil Vidion and podbean and vox nest over here so uh, that's pretty cool it's going to be really cool um it'll be fun um yeah michael helms i for podfest i uh anyway yeah we'll talk about that i i think i got one anyway so so thank you everybody for hanging out i'm i'm, I'm not we're not done with the stream yet i just want to uh thank you for hanging out having some fun and you know again this is a stream so like if you have any questions about podcasting or anything maybe i can help or maybe some of the other people can help so and you know so we're here to lounge but we can also ask questions and so um and we do have for the lounge we do have a twitter and an instagram and fyi i just started running ads for the podcast engineering school on instagram and facebook so if you see an ad for the podcast engineering school, like, just let me know what you think. Like, if it looks good, if it sucks, like, you know, if there's a problem, obviously let me know if there's a problem because I can, you know, I'd love to fix it. But um, I'm not sure if you will see any of my ads, but um, but I'm putting some ads for podcast engineering school. Um, oh, you know what else I wanted to do? Wait, why didn't I? It wasn't on my list. Okay. One thing, so here's, you guys know RX-7, right? This is this is Isotope RX-7. Yep, uh, that's what you're seeing. I brought a song in here because I wanted to show you this. So one, in the 90s, uh, digital audio was fairly new in, in the big studios anyway, right? Like, I mean, we had some big digital machines, but mainly everything was still analog. And and even CDs, right? CDs came out what in the eighties, right? Mid eighties, or, or like early mid eighties. CDs got big. I remember. I, I remember in high school when I was a freshman in eighty six. In the James Way near my house, they had CDs, and like we had never seen CDs before. So, I'm thinking CDs were mid eighties, and so once you had a CD, and then of course once once people had computers. Then you could open up, you could you could basically rip the audio from a CD into a file and open it up on your computer and look at it this way. And that's when for music, um, you know, back then they had standards. Like they thought like zero dB in analog should be like minus 12 digital. And that ended up being, that, that ended up, the level was so low. Like the Luffs level was probably like minus 27 or something, minus 30. That It's so low. So then there were some bands that were jacking up the volume on their CDs. And of course, back then, these the, the hardcore audio engineer, engineers were like, oh, they're not following the standard and all this stuff. So it was kind of the Wild West for like music loudness. And But here's the thing. There's no, I mean, nowadays there's sort of a standard with music and podcasting, especially for these music services. But back then it was like, hey, you just, you're going to master your songs and you're going to put out your album on CD. You can make it whatever you want. It's a CD. People are going to plug it in and people are going to put it into the player and play it and adjust the volume knob. Uh, first CD you bought was Metallica's Black Album. Mm. First CD I bought was Anthrax Among the Living. Yes. All right. So one thing when I when I started looking at different bands and different albums in the like this in a digital editor, some look normal and some like this one. Look how look how thick and and limited this this wave is. This is a song. Oh, it shows it shows you what song. Them Bones. It's by Alice in Chains, which is from the album Dirt. Uh The album Dirt is like, it's such a great album. It's so, it, it, it's very dark and depressing, sort of. But it's, it really, it released on September 29, 1992. It just, it's a phenomenal 
album in so many ways. Um, well, mostly because Alice in Chains as a band was really good during this time. Uh, so anyway, Them Bones is the first song off the track, and I'm just going to play... I don't even know if I want to play any of it. Like, I think I just want to play like one second of it. I don't think I should get flagged for playing one second, right? I don't know. Anyway, listen to this. Oh, here, listen. All right, there you go. So you know the song. This is the first song on the album. Now, in podcasting for a stereo file, what is our what is our luffs level target? Right? It's minus 16 luffs. And now you, you do hear of albums or songs that are minus 14 luffs, and you hear of some that are minus 12. And minus 12 luffs is really loud. But watch what happens when I take this song from Alice in Chains from 1992 and I Scan the loudness with RX-7. Look at what you get. Look at the integrated luffs, the second number right here. Look at that. Minus 8.7. <laughs> this is like 8.5 dB louder or 7.5 dB louder than podcast podcasts. I mean, this is this is really loud, and and so well. So let's do this. Let's let's say we wanted to make this our, you know, the standard for podcasting. Let's change the luffs to minus sixteen, and watch watch how small the wave file becomes. Right, it's processing the whole song. Wow, it's taking. I didn't think it. Oh, there you go. All right, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> See how small it became. Anyway, I just thought it was really interesting that the the Alice the the Dirt album, specifically the Dirt album, was so it's so loud. It's just it, it it's got to be one of the loudest albums. You know, let's undo that. It's it, I mean, look at this. It's amazing. So it's a great album, and and they change for some reason they changed the they also changed the song order. Let me come down here. See. Down in a Hole was is one of the hit singles. You, you've, you've all probably heard that. It's a great song. Um, oh, look, Jerry Cantrell wrote it and wrote the lyrics, too. But Lane Staley sang it, of course. because Well, they both sang it. Um, but Down in a Hole is number four. But now, if you, if you look at, like, in previous releases, they stuck Down in a Hole at the end or something. And this is the real order. This is the order of the album that I remember. But something happened recently, and I, like there's a there's a, like a reissue of this album that th it like they took down in a hole and they put it near the end or something. It's weird. So I thought that was weird. But anyway, great album. Lane Staley. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If I if I had the ch if I was in a band, if I was in an awesome rock band, and I could choose any singer ever of any time era, you know back in the blues or the fifties or the seventies or the any time, any place. If I could choose any singer, I would choose Lane Staley. My second pick would be, uh, James Hetfield from Metallica, but Lane Staley hands down, no question. Just if I was in a band, I would want him fronting the band. That's I, I just, I, I thought he was so talented as a singer in so many ways and very unfortunate that, he had a lot of demons and he battled them and he lost and he's been gone for many years now, right? He's been gone since what, 2003 or 2005 or something. Let me, uh, 2002. Yeah. He died in 2002. Wow. That's 16 years ago. Yeah. Anyway, Alice in Chains kept going. You know they have a they had they had a bunch more albums. They got another singer, and it just as you can imagine, it just was never the same, right? Like literally, never. It just isn't the same. So, well, that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the lounge. And one thing I wanted to ask you is, I mean, I started the lounge like if you, like obviously seven to nine Eastern time. Which and it's which equals four to six p.m. Pacific time. I I thought this was a good time to stream because it's not too late, but it's after work. 
uh, I thought this was a good time. But then what happened is I've been thinking that maybe later is a little better. Like, you know what I mean? Like when the kids go to bed or just, I don't know. Is But I don't want it to be too late. But do you guys think... You guys in the U.S., if you if you have any thoughts, if you think I could do it later, like an hour later, would that be better? I mean, the reason I like doing it from 7 to 9 Eastern is that so people on the East Coast can listen and, you know, we're done by 9. And, you know, you have some of your night left. So, yes. You're welcome, Michael Helms. Thanks everybody for watching. We're gonna we're gonna punch out here. Um, we'll be here next week and every week. If you could and you want to share the love, tell people about the lounge, invite them. Uh, you know, follow all our social accounts. You know the deal. Ralph Rivera's still here. Oh God. I need. Oh, wait, hold on. Why haven't I shown this before? This is like, oh, thanks, Anthony. This is like the longest goodbye, right? It's <laughs> I keep saying goodbye. Hey, here's a podcast, Carbon-Based Business Units. There he is. Look at him. Look at him with his Heil PR40. 